Wow, that Amazon man isn't coming here for the first time in history. Wow. Right guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna have a little look at the channel in a different vibe, a bit more chilled out. Let me know your thoughts on this type of content. Secondly, we are going to run a giveaway. Now you have to be subscribed to the channel to even get entered, but over the next week or two, we're gonna be giving away a bunch of hats. Now the guys at Skillis have dropped me a load of hats, and as much as it's gonna pain me to give them away, because I love them and I live in them, I'm gonna give these away. Like I say, you've got to be subscribed. First one is the creme de la creme, the black on black two-tone. That is, that's that's my favorite by a long way. We've got a couple of baby blues, we've got black and whites, and we've got a couple of reds. So they are all going, but you've got to be subscribed. Watch out over the next few weeks for a bit of more info on that. Today, we're gonna to look at adding dynamic loft to impact. So if you see an idea of flipping the face at impact, where you're sort of scooping at it, and everyone says, oh, you need to get a little more compression, this is probably the video for you. There are some big no-nos when you start talking about this type of idea in the world of drills. If you get into the wrong type of drills, you can just make your life even, even worse. So we're gonna talk about the best drills in order to get rid of a bit scoopy impact. In the meantime, though, to get kick us off, we're gonna have a quick look around the back garden. The back garden is a bomb site right now. It's a complete bomb site and it is what it is. There's something going on. We're putting up a home unit. It's going to be the new headquarters for indoor lessons for myself and there's no dodging about it the garden is just a bomb site so as a bit of a vlog a bit of a side story over the next few weeks we're gonna have a little look around give you guys an update and hopefully if anybody's starting to think about putting one of these up at home this might just help you out some maybe pitfalls and bits and pieces so yeah let's go have a quick look and then we'll get into helping those sorts of people out right let's have a look This is the mat out, so I've had to move, the, I'm gonna be honest, I've had to move the mat. The mat is, had to move for teaching purposes and this is a bomb site, right? But this is the unit, okay? We're gonna have a chat about it, we're gonna walk around it. A lot of people have asked about how we're building it, what size is it, all the rest of it. Oh, someone's left a mug on the floor. I'll be kicking that off later. In front of the unit, three meter bifold doors are gonna go in the front. Uh, dimensions, you've got 3.4 up, just under seven, well, about, about seven across, and then just under five deep. So it's it's a pretty sizable unit. Um, for anybody that's asked, it's just joists um, on a concrete slab that was roughly leveled. It is, uh, we've had to put bits of PDM down and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much taken shape now. Now it's not a perfect rectangle, like nothing in life is perfect, but we've got a pretty cool little outcove going in here. I think this might put back unit, maybe a, a TV screen, maybe a bit of a chill out area, not really sure. But in general, I think the layout will be, I'm thinking the whole screen will be probably a unit in terms of just a singular screen from Foresight. Not entirely sure as of yet, but definitely enough room to hit some balls. So I'll probably be about here hitting balls into the wall. That is about three meters from here to there. And then as I spin it, I've got another sort of three meters back. Um, maybe a few bits and pieces of gym equipment if we've got room. But yeah, um, wall, hopefully we'll have a camera here. Obviously you can't see it, but hopefully a camera on the top. Um, obviously projector, so definitely a camera looking down. And then probably about here will be some sort of desk with a couple of screens, chill out area, coffee machine, um, probably a stack of weights probably here maybe a, an exercise bike or something not entirely sure fitness has gone well out the window but for anybody that's asked i know there's a lot of people have been asking that's that right dynamic loft so people that scoop it people that try and sort of help it in the air this is what we tend to see when we talk that type of delivery we talk about a delivery where the club head sort of overtakes the hands and you spend all your life trying to figure out how to get forward shaffling now the thing is with golf and I guess this sport is you can make it as complicated or as not complicated as you like and you could run as many different drills as you think necessary to get the handle further forward but the reality is you're taking whatever club you've got pretty windy today whatever club you've got and you are adding loft okay you are physically adding loft the handle's working back and the loft is working up so you're pretty much doing everything possible to not get forward chaffing now here's a no-no, just like a flat out no. If you're somebody that sees too much of this movement, the no-no on that 
is to try and chuck your hands further forward if you see too much of a cut anyway. So if you see sort of like that high soft left to right added too much loft, nothing sharp that just spins up. Look what happens when you chuck your hands further forward. So I'm using the DST train aids here, right? Fairly strong lofted golf club. But if I put my hands further forward, the face opens. The reason you are doing your best to put your hands back at impact is because you're actually trying to close the golf club. You're actually trying to square it up. Now that's important. That is like the crux of this whole session. You are trying to deliver the golf club this way for a reason. That's not negotiable. You're a good, you're a good player. Nine times out of 10, most people have got a degree of coordination, even though they seem like they haven't. You're doing this movement to compensate for a face that's relatively open. If this face was open, coming into impact there, square, if that was open, my best way of getting that square is to almost allow that club to go past the hands. So if you're trying to square the golf club, in order to get forward shaft lean, you've only got to really learn to take loft off. Does that make sense? So, so if this is you, if you are seeing too much of that movement, adding loft, most people would see that as a cup at the back of the left wrist or a, I guess, a scoop type move or certainly no ideas of forward shaft lean. Rather than concentrating on generating forward shaft lean, concentrate on the loft. Start to learn to deliver loft differently. So rather than seeing the back of the left wrist that is almost cupped and you're sort of throwing loft at it, take the back of this left wrist, rather than it facing the sky, push it to the ground. Now straight away, loft looks hard down to the ground. Equally not as good, but the opposite pattern to what you've got. So if you're starting to spin it up and seeing too much loft, start and learn to get the left wrist on the ground. So the ideas of going to the top of the backswing, getting the left knee wrist on the floor, keeping it on the floor all the way around and working it this way. Eddie Pepper used to do that drill all the time. Now what you're trying to do there is rotate this left wrist down, keep almost drag your knuckles across the floor. And that, what that'll do is that'll change the way in which the golf club works. So up to the top of the backswing, just start and drag my knuckles across the floor and start and see that golf club shut down. So just work that for a couple of swings. So I'm just trying to really get the golf club to work down, rotate my left wrist along the floor, really sort of not completely flip it, but what I'm trying to do is get the back of my knuckles, drag it along the floor this way. Now what happens is immediately as I do this drill, I'm gonna see a massive flip over of my hands, especially if I'm used to doing this. But I'm changing that action to this action. Now equally just as poor. But what happens the moment I start to see too much hook on the golf ball? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna give my body the option to do now? I'm gonna give my body the option now to put in a little bit of forward shuffling and then add a little more rotation. So the more that I can get the golf club to flip over this way and keep the body quiet, the moment I start and rotate, I've now got an impact position that I've always wanted. You've got to give yourself an opportunity to put in forward shaft lean. The worst thing you can do as somebody that scoops the golf ball or doesn't create too much dynamic loft and sees this movement is to start and drive the handle further forward because the more I drive the handle further forward, the more the face is gonna reside open. It's just gonna be even, even worse the moment you try and get more forward shaft lean. Learn to take loft off the golf club, this way. So from this angle, learn to take loft off the golf club, get it hooking, and then start to learn to rotate. The golf club won't flip as much. The more you rotate, once you feel like the face is flipping down, the more that you'll get that compression, the more you'll turn this flippy move into a compressed draw. It will happen quicker than you've ever done before. Now to prove that to you, if you're ever, ever stuck, set yourself up with the face, 45 degrees closed. Set it down, it's closed. That's the same as me learning to do this movement, okay? Then rather than allowing it to go left, because it should go left, the face is looking hard left, start and learn to get the handle further forward, which squares up the face. Just simply set up with your clothes and just feel like you're gonna hit it hard right. And all of a sudden now you will start and compress that golf ball you will start and get your hands further forward in an effort not to hit it left. 
but then you are reacting to a closed face now, not an open face. Golf is always just a bunch of opposites and reactions and we make it as difficult as possible. Rather than focusing on seeing too much this movement and then trying to drive the handle further forward, which I see so often, all you're doing there is leaving the face open. Learn to square down the golf club. Learn to hit some hooks. Learn to hit some hooks with the wrist conditions working down and around, keeping the body quiet. And then start to learn to get the body to rotate with that move you will start and really change your pattern. It'll feel like you're about to flip hook it left. You won't, you'll, you'll nut it. Different, different ideas. Next time you see someone flip it, don't get them to drive their hands over forward. That really annoys me. Right, see me unit, I'm gonna have a coffee. Hope that helps. Don't be long, it's not gonna be long.